was this story about the UK's first, and I repeat, the UK's first social distance concert took place in Newcastle, right? And I'm not mad at it. I think prior, there was a few other images I saw of some other social distancing type events that looked really bleak and really distressing, like this clubbing event that happened somewhere. I'm, I'm going to say somewhere in Malta or somewhere like that where they had these rings drawn out on the on the ground. People were literally dancing in the rings. And that was how you basically were social distance raving. And then there was another event that Gerd Janssen played in somewhere in Germany, where they have a similar sort of setup. And they had Gerd Janssen on some sort of platform behind a plexiglass and people dancing again within their little allotted circle. Um, and I was thinking, you know what? I'd much rather wait 10 years then have to like subject myself to dancing in a spray painted circle with a face mask on um, around people right that's just not my vibe but I'm also curious to see what other people do who kind of want to kickstart their economy kickstart the industry um, they have no other means of making an income or they just want to get out there and put their shows on they want to connect to their fans I'm interested to see how they go about doing things in America they've got the whole drive-in concert things that are kicking off um, in the UK they try to do something similar but I think they kind of <coughs> so i think they kind of ran into some roadblocks in terms of health and safety concerns i guess especially i, I would imagine the the driving events in the uk didn't work out mostly because i'd imagine most of these events had to happen outside of london they have to happen in the north of england and in north of england if you're not aware there's um you know, they've had a hard time dealing with COVID-19. Um, there's been a lot of localized lockdowns in areas um, up north. So I would assume um, the mandate across there is that, you know, you can't have any large gathering, no matter how, you know, well protected, no matter how many people are in the cars, you just, they just completely riot it off. So I'm assuming that's what that, that didn't happen at that time. Um, but I think this idea, which they kind of debuted in Newcastle, looks like an interesting approach and something I think would probably work once everything goes back to normal. I think having these little squares where people sit inside these little boxes sort of things on platforms that see up to five people could actually be something that they could implement for VIP customers going forward. Because I've always, I've always been dubious about buying tickets, VIP tickets anyway, for festivals. Because you don't really get that much value for your money. Some of them, you get the ability to go to your own pre-designated -des pre bar where it's not as busy. You get a different toilet to use that maybe is a bit more luxurious, quote-unquote. Or if you're lucky, you get the chance of kind of intermingling around celebrities and, you know, having them be at arm's length, which I'm not really that bothered about, right? I just want to see my, my favorite acts. I want to be able to go to the bar um, easily and I want to be able to go to the loo when I want to go to the loo. But anything else apart from that, I don't really care. Or just have a good view. So I think if they wanted to... They could use this uh, model that they're going to detail here now for, that's reported from Manchester Evening News. They could use these little um, square little things and they place them maybe somewhere on a platform maybe that faces the, the stage at an angle, if you get what I mean. So sort of like on the edges, that could be a good way to kind of give people, a, like it's another, it's, a, it's an experience that would be worth the ticket price. Or you could just have them placed in front of the in front of the stage, so it's a little bit higher up on the platform, and it's not people just mingling in and, in and around each other in that little mosh bitty bit where they usually put all the VIPs. But I thought it was an interesting story regardless. So this is from Manchester Evening News. This is the following: It says, due to the coronavirus pandemic, gigs may gigs many people were looking forward to to have been put on hold for at least another year. But in what um, could be a sign of the future for music lovers, the UK's first social distance concert took place last night. Uh, promoters SD Concert said the safety of their audiences was being protected as each of the concert goers had a viewing platform with its own table, chairs and fridge. The idea is that the people from the same household will arrive at the venue, park up, then enjoy the concert from their own private area, which I think is absolutely bad. I didn't know they had a fridge. That's absolutely banging. Really good idea. And, I'm, and I remember reading somewhere where there's um, waiters and staff to like um, take your orders for drinks and food and stuff I, I guess they just bring it to you you order and then they come along and bring it over to over to you but I think it's a great idea again for VIP customers going forward I think uh, a lot of people will step up these sort of seats but in order to view something like this 
in order to do something like this now, I wouldn't be keen to go to a concert like this right now at this moment. Um, if you've been to a UK festival like All Points East or those kind of shitty ones, you'll know that the further back you are from the stage, the worse the sound is. And that's a, that's usually a common theme for most festivals in the UK anyway. Let me not be, um, let me not pick out All Points East, which is probably why people like to go places like Glastonbury because I guess because they're in the middle of nowhere and maybe the promoters and organisers have a good relationship with the local council. They're able to... Um, basically get that that volume limiter basically removed from their pa system so they can really crank up a bit because every festival i've been to with the exception of maybe junction two the sound has been pretty terrible right and that's even places like love box and stuff right the sound isn't the best especially when they put they used to have it it's at victoria park wherever that park is in east london um it wasn't the best sound um, they had to really really uh cap it at a certain decibel again to not um annoy all the local uh all the neighbors and stuff and all the local residents so my only issue with this is be if you are going to sit if you are going to be sitting in a little cube that's spaced out two meters apart you're obviously going to be way way far back from the crowd from the stage you're probably not going to hear anything uh it's not going to be a real big festival experience and plus as well they don't have the benefit of like i think this would work really well if they had those massive screens that a lot of the bigger artists have nowadays those big screens that they put on either side of the of the stage so that if you are really far back you can still literally see the person you're going to see again it's not the best experience because if you're going to buy a ticket to go see somebody you kind of want to see them on the stage but if you're too far back to just see a little bit of a dot on the stage it's quite nice to see oh yeah cool that is the person i like you know there's the person there's the face it's the close-up of them dancing on the stage that's that's that might that may be might make it worthwhile but as a as an idea i'm not mad at it at all i really aren't i really am not because it says Around 2,500 people flocked to Newcastle's Gosworth Park on Tuesday to see Sam Fender, who I don't know who that is, perform at a hometown gig. Organizers say 500 separate, 500 separate raised metal platforms were set up at a pop-up site named the Virgin Money Arena. M Virgin Money Unity Arena. That's a terrible name. Uh, Sam 26 will play again on Thursday, August the 13th with performances from Sir Van Morrison, The Libertines and Maximum Park. Um, also lined up uh, throughout August and into September. Yeah, this is the most white girl event ever. And look at that. What's that? Four tins of Heineken, a massive pitcher, plastic cups everywhere, matching marks to go with the outfit, you know, do your thing. But yeah, again, it's, it's, it's for a certain demographic of people out there that would want to go see, you know, I guess if you're a fan of Sam Fender or whatever, is that his name, Sam Fender? Sam Fender, Sam Foster, what's his name? Yeah, Sam Fender, you'd probably go see someone like that play there. But I guess for, I don't know, it'd be unlikely that I would go and buy a ticket to go to Tame Impala play an event like this, right? You'd actually want to, if you go see Tame Impala, you want to go see them play in a sweaty festival somewhere, you know, tripping off of LSD, rubbing shoulders with some random guy you just met the other day. Um, oh, at the first day of the festival, connecting over the lyrics to, I don't know, some song that you both like, right? Um, but I guess if you're seeing these kind of like radio pop acts and stuff, it probably doesn't matter, right? You just want to, you kind of hear the same song played in your car on your way to work. So it doesn't really matter if you're hearing it <coughs> from like 500 meters away. But again, I just think it's a great idea for VIP customers going forward. I think this would really be worth the money, especially if you've got the ability. Imagine if they had these and then you also have like, um, this might be sound gross. I don't know if it is gross, but imagine you had like a port cabin or port -a -loo attached to it. So you didn't. You literally didn't even have to leave to go to to go to another place. You could just sit there, go to a loo right next to your place that you're watching it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. That might be a cool idea. Or you have, or you have these in a certain section where there were toilets next to them. That would be pretty cool as well. And a designated bar as well in that space. It said they have a, a fridge as well, but I don't know where the fridge is. It said there's a fridge. I'm not sure if, if that step is the fridge that you open up, or if the fridge is that little box with the ice cubes and the drinks in. I think that's the fridge, basically, isn't it? The little tub with the drinks inside them. But yeah, interesting way to do an event. Again, I'm not mad at it. I think uh, people looking at alternative ways to kind of get people out uh, to see live shows, I'm down for, especially if people want to go to them. Again, I'm probably not. I'm probably going to be sitting on the fence until there's a vaccine. Um, I don't really see the need to kind of put myself in harm's way just to, you know. Because again, for me personally, I like going out when I don't have any um hang-ups or worries at home do you know what i mean I, I i don't want to go out in the back of my head knowing that oh yeah there's this bloody virus lingering in the air um that could catch me at any point in time 
especially with my pre-existing conditions with asthma i just can't really take the chances really so it's not really and again it's not worth it i don't think there's anyone i'd want to see that bad that i'd be willing to break protocol and you know and risk my life to go and see to be honest um and i think the parties and the celebrations and the live gigs and the events are going to be far better when everyone is kind of feeling good about the situation when there's a bit more light at the end of the tunnel when we've maybe heard some rumors of a vaccine or we've got some herd immunity going on i think people are going to be far better place to kind of enjoy themselves going out than just heading out you know now and kind of battling to see some friend to play somewhere but again i like the stage idea design i think that's a really cool option to see um again let me know what you think in the comments would you go to an event like this would you be willing to go and sit uh, to see your favorite artist uh, perform on the stage far 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 in front of you like this in those little um three to five people cubicles or would you rather wait until you have the ability to be swaying left and right like these girls are without all the barriers and the barricades with your favorite friends dropping your phone kicking some stranger standing on someone's shoulders what would you prefer let me know in the comments below